Hello, traders. Steve Ribble with Trader Tax Coach, talking to you today about how to audit proof your trader tax status with the IRS. There was a recent court case that came across in the last few years that further shed light on exactly what the IRS is looking for when they determine whether to classify someone as an investor or a trader for tax purposes. This was Mr. Vanderlee versus the commissioner. Back in 2002, Mr. Vanderlee filed his taxes as a trader. He claimed a $1.3 million mark-to-market loss and $92,000 of trading-related expenses for the year. He shortly thereafter received an IRS deficiency notice because the IRS was disputing his claim that he was a traitor. Unfortunately for Mr. Vanderlee, this went to court, and the court ruled that he was an investor, not a trader. This means they reclassified his capital or his uh, loss as a capital loss, and it only allowed him to take $3,000 off of his taxes. They also disallowed every single dollar of his trading-related expenses because investors cannot deduct business expenses. Mr. Vanderlee now owes the IRS $620,000 in back taxes, plus interest, plus over $7,600 of accuracy-related penalties. Now, do you think Mr. Vanderlee had a high-priced and knowledgeable CPA prepare his taxes that year? I'm willing to bet he did. But my thought is that trader taxation is a specialized area. You want to work with someone who's an expert in this area so that you get it right and you don't end up like Mr. Vanderlee in tax court. So why did he lose his trader status? Well, there's a number of reasons. First of all, he made no mark-to-market -mark election uh, with his 2002 tax return. He didn't trade very much. He only had 159 trades for 2002. His holding periods also worked against him as that uh, most of the trades were longer term in nature. Also, the frequency. He had a lot of gaps in his trading. He only averaged four to eight trades a month, and most of the activity came in May and June of the year, and then again in December for tax loss selling. So, are you a trader? How do you qualify? Well, unfortunately, the IRS offers no clear definition. It's not defined in the Internal Revenue Code or any tax regulations. Most of what we know about trader status comes from the guidance that we get from court cases such as Mr. Vanderlee's. If you look up what the IRS says in Topic 429, Traders and Securities, you're going to see three things. And you'll see the generality of how the IRS puts this, and you kind of wish that they'd give you a little bit more specifics. Unfortunately, they don't. They say you must seek to profit from the daily market movements and the prices of securities, and not from dividends, interest, or capital appreciation. Your activity must be substantial, and you must carry on the activity with continuity and regularity. Specifically, the four things they're going to focus on is your holding periods. They want to see short-term uh, uh, holding periods. They want to see frequency and dollar amounts of your trades. Frequency, getting back to that continuity we talked about in the previous slide, no gaps. You want to be consistent with your trades throughout the year. The extent to which you pursue this activity to produce an income, in other words, run this like a business. They also are going to look at the amount of time that you devote to this activity. You miss one of those four, and they're going to reclassify you as an investor. What that means is that you'll lose deductions, like your home office, investment seminars, internet. Your margin interest becomes severely restricted in the ability to deduct. You'll be subject to wash sale rules, and most importantly, you can't elect mark to market for your business. The good news, there's no formal election if you qualify. If you meet those four requirements I just showed you, you'll qualify as a trader in securities. That means you can claim trader status for 2012 and file uh, a business tax return. That also means you can go back and amend prior tax returns if you've had the same type of activity. Um, you can file an amended return, claim your trading expenses, and get a refund. If you're not sure if you qualify, visit me at TraderTaxCoach.net and click on the tab that says Trader Status. You'll see this Trader Status Evaluation. Fill this out and submit it, and I'll personally review your situation and help you determine whether you're going to qualify as a trader in securities or not. Once again, this was Steve Ribble with Trader Tax Coach. I appreciate your time. I'll leave my contact information up there. If you have any questions, you can email me at info at TraderTaxCoach.net, or you can hit me up on Twitter at TraderTaxCoach.